Good evening, good day, good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to have you with us uh, today for this next in the series of IOMP monthly webinars. And if you allow me to share the screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, uh, I would like to really welcome you to this fantastic presentation on carbon ion radiotherapy, describing the current status and future perspectives, which will be delivered by our guest speaker, Dr. Taku Inaniwa, who is a group leader of treatment beam research group at the Institute for Quantum Medical Science, National Institutes for Quantum Science and Technology in Chiba, Japan. Uh, Dr. Inaniwa's research focuses on developing those calculation algorithms and biological models used for charge particle therapy treatment planning. He has contributed more than 100 peer reviewed publications. He is a member of International Scientific Advisory Board of Physics in Medicine and Biology. And for his work, he has been awarded in numerous national and international awards. He is also currently serving as a guest professor at the Division of Health Science Graduate School of Medicine, Osaka University. Before I hand over to Dr. Inaniwa, uh, you will all be muted and your videos will be switched off just to ensure to, that we spare the bandwidth for the presentations. You are also asked to type your questions into the question and answers button at the bottom of your screens. And following the presentations, I will convey your questions to our presenter. Thank you very much. And I will now hand over to our speaker tonight. Dr. Inaniwa, the screen is yours. Okay, I'll share the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, excellent, yes. Okay, so I'll start. Uh, so, um, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Taku Inaniwa from QSD Japan. Today, I talk about carbon ion radiation therapy, the current status and future perspective. I'm very happy if you enjoy my talk, and I'm more than happy if you um, have an interest in carbon ion radiation therapy after my talk. So this is the contents of my presentation. After a short introduction of carbon ion radiation therapy, I'd like to introduce the physical and biological characteristics of carbon ions and beam delivery system for carbon ion radiation therapy. And finally, I'd like to briefly introduce our new research project as a future perspective of charged particle therapy. Okay, in carbon ion radiation therapy, the positively charged carbon ions are generated at the ion source by removing the atomic electrons from carbon atom. And these positively charged carbon ions are accelerated by the synchrotron up to 70% of light speeds. And such accelerated beam is applied to the tumor in the patients. So as everybody knows, the carbon ion beam has black peak at the stopping position. In addition, the biological effectiveness at the black peak position is much higher than that of the entrance region. So, 
by using these physical and biological characteristics that those distribution of the carbon ion beam is very conformal to the tumor with small number of treatment fields as, com as compared to the conventional X-ray radiation therapy. So this is a brief history of carbon ion radiation therapy. In 1940s, Dr. Robert Wilson proposed to use fast protons for radiation therapy. And in 1956, fast treatment with heavy ions were conducted at the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in the United States. Unfortunately, this pioneering project had been shut down by 1993. And soon after, NIRS in Japan and GSI in Germany started carbon ion radiation therapy. And following these pioneering um, studies, many other facilities have started carbon ion radiation therapy in the world. In the past three decades, carbon ion radiation therapy has been applied for various tumor sites. And for all these tumor sites, the optimum dose fractionation protocols have been developed through the dose escalation clinical studies. And so far, more than 40,000 patients have been treated with carbon ions in the world. And from these clinical experiences, we have revealed that carbon ions are effective to radio-resistant tumors and carbon ions are suitable for hypofractionation. Okay, this is one clinical example of sacral bone sarcoma case, which is one of the radio-resistant tumors. Before the treatment, we observed big tumor here, and to this tumor, we applied carbon ion radiation therapy. No, sorry, sorry. After treatment, we observed mild uh, skin reactions, but after eight years, tumors disappeared. And he can walk. And he can jump, as shown in the movie. OK. This is one example of those escalation clinical studies to investigate to realize the hypofractionated carbon ion therapy. For non small cell lung cancer, we started the carbon ion radiation therapy with 18 fractions in six weeks. The number of fractions was reduced to nine fractions, four fractions. And finally, we have realized the single fractionated treatment, so one day treatment for the non small cell lung cancer. Okay, this slide shows the location of carbon ion therapy facilities in the world. The blue ones are the operating facilities, and green ones are the facilities under construction. Among 14 operating facilities, seven facilities are located in Japan. And Mayo Clinic has started the construction in the United States. Okay. 
I listed here some of radiations that have been used in cancer treatment. Among these radiations, proton, helium, carbon, oxygen, and neon ions are categorized as charged particle. And charged particle except proton, so helium, carbon, oxygen, and neon ions are usually referred to as heavy ions. Okay, this table summarizes the characteristics of X-ray, electron, proton, and carbon ions as therapeutic radiations. In this table, the mass charge energy accelerator sites, LET, RBE, radiation action, oxygen enhancement ratio, presence or absence of the black peak, and the number of sites are summarized. It's a little bit busy, right? But when we look overview this table, we can recognize that X-ray is similar to electron. In addition, roughly speaking, proton is also similar to X-ray and electron other than the presence of the black peak. But carbon ions is considerably different from other radiations. For instance, the carbon ions requires huge and expensive treatment machine like accelerator. And carbon ions has very high LET, more than 200 kb per micron or more. And therefore, the RBE of carbon ion beam is also high. Direct action is dominant, and therefore, the OER of the carbon ions is small. Furthermore, the dose distribution of the carbon ion beam is very conformal to the tumor with very sharp black peak and very small lateral penumbra. Okay, here I'd like to point out that all these unique characteristics of the carbon ions are originated from the fact that carbon ion is very heavy and carbon ion has large atomic charge. So I'd like to move to the next topic, the physical characteristics of carbon ions. When the charged particle beam enter the patient body, the main physics interaction are the energy deposition, multiple gluon scattering, and nuclear interaction. For about the energy deposition, when the charged particle enter the patient body, the charged particle transfer its energy to the atomic electrons through the coulomb force. Therefore, the charged particle gradually loses its energy and slowing down and finally stops somewhere around the black peak. Because this energy transfer is caused by the coulomb force, the larger the atomic charge of the incident ions, the slower the incident ions, the larger the energy transfer to the material is. This indicates that micro microscopically, the larger the atomic charge and slower the incident ions, the severer the radiation induced DNA damages are. And microscopically, it causes the black peak. Okay, second physics interaction, multiple coulomb scattering. When the charged particle beam enters the patient's body, 
the lateral width of the charged particle beam increases with depth by the multiple Coulomb scattering. Due to the force of inertia, the heavier the incident ions, the smaller the lateral beam width is. For instance, the lateral beam width of carbon ion beam is about 3.6 times smaller than that of the proton beam. This means that the lateral penumbra uh, of the carbon ion beam is much, much smaller than that of the proton beam. So final uh, physics interaction, the nuclear interaction. When the incident ions enter the patient body, some of them undergoes nuclear interactions and breaks into fragment particles. Therefore, the number of incident ions decreases with depth and the number of fragment particles increases with depth and spread widely beyond the range of the incident ions. These fragment particles deliver the undesired dose behind the black peak. This undesired dose delivered by the fragment particles behind the black peak is called fragment tail. It is maybe it is uh, easy to expect that the collision probability of large ion is higher than the collision probability of small ions. This indicates that nuclear interaction probability of heavy ions is higher than the nuclear interaction probability of light ions, like protons. OK, uh, let's move to the next topic, the biological characteristics of carbon ions. When we consider the energy required to grill a stick, it is about 260,000 gray. This energy, this dose, it's orders of magnitude higher than the typical energy or dose required to the radiation therapy, about 60 gray. From this consideration, we can easily understand that radiation therapy does not grill a tumor. So what is the radiation action? When the radiation hit the cancer cell, the radiation induces DNA damages through the direct or indirect actions. There are a variety of radiation-induced DNA damages, such as base damage, DNA protein crosslink, single strand break, and double strand break. Among these damages, the double strand break is the most important damage that can be critical to the cell. In most cases, such radiation-induced double stand break will be repaired correctly through the homologous, uh, homologous uh, recombination and non-homologous end joining. But if many double stand breaks are densely uh, induced within a small size volume, like chromosome size volume, such cluster DNA damage are difficult to be repaired and inducing chromosome ablation and finally inducing leading to the mitotic cell death. So the essence of the radiation therapy is to induce irreparable DNA damages in the cancer cell. So how to induce such uh, DNA damages to the cancer cell? 
to induce such uh, DNA damages to the cancer cell, increasing the irradiation dose is the most standard way. When the population of the cells are exposed to radiation, the number of surviving cells decreases with increasing the irradiation dose. This dose survival relation is usually described by the linear quadratic model, LQ model, in which the single hit cell death and two hit cell deaths are taken into account. But even the same absorbed dose is delivered, the resultant survival fraction is different for different radiations. For instance, the survival fraction after carbon ion irradiation is smaller than that after the X-ray irradiation. This indicates that cell killing efficiency of carbon ion is higher than that of the X-ray. This cell killing efficiency of carbon ions is also varies with its velocity. Here, please remember that since the energy transfer is caused by the Coulomb force, the larger the atomic charge of the incident ions and slower the incident ions, the larger the energy deposition deposited around the ion trajectory is. That way, as compared to the low LET, so sparsely ionizing X-ray radiation, the heavy ions like carbon ions deliver very large dose locally, densely along their trajectories. So after carbon ion irradiation or heavy ion irradiation, the cluster DNA damages will be generated along their trajectories as shown in the green line of the gamma H2AX foci within the cell nucleus. So such cluster DNA damages are difficult to be repaired regardless of the oxygen status and cell cycle. So this means that heavy ions like carbon ions can effectively kill the cancer cell. So up to now, um, I've introduced the physical and biological characteristics of heavy ions. Heavy ions like neon ions is very effective to tumor control and penumbra size is very small, very good. But such heavy ions require very huge and very expensive treatment machine, including the accelerator. In addition, such heavy ions, the effects on the normal tissue is severe and effect of the fragment part, fragment is very much. On the other hand, the light ions like protons, it requires relatively small and cheap treatment machine and effect on the normal tissue is mild and fragment effect is less. But such light ions is not effect, um, effective for tumor control and penumbra size is very large. So each ion species has advantages and disadvantages. For the cancer treatment, too light is not good. And too heavy is also not good. If you have to choose one ion species Carbon ion is a good choice for cancer treatment. Okay, before I move to the next topic, 
I have to mention about RB model for carbon ion radiation therapy. As I introduced, carbon ion radiation therapy is clinically more effective than photon radiation therapy when same absorbed dose is delivered. This feature is usually expressed by the RBE. This RBE, most of you know that RBE is a ratio of a reference radiation dose to the ion dose leading to the same biological effect. And this RBE depends on various physical and biological factors such as particle species, LET, dose, cell and tissue type, oxygen status, and end point. So to optimally use the biological characteristic of carbon, ion, carbon ions in the cancer treatment, we need the detailed RB model that can be used in the treatment planning software. So far, two different RB systems have been used in clinical treatments of carbon ion radiation therapy, the Japanese and German RB systems. This table summarizes the important specification of the RB models. I'll skip the detailed explanation, but both RB systems have been validated to the clinical data independently and have been successfully used in carbon ion radiation therapy in the Asian and European centers respectively. But these RB models provide different RB values for same absorbed dose. So special care must be paid when we compare the clinical results that have been that obtained from one RB system to the uh, clinical result obtained with another RB system. So I'd like to move to the next topic, the beam delivery system for carbon ion radiation therapy. Okay, this is a bad eye view of, of our uh, treatment machine, HIMAC. The size of the HIMAC is 120 meter by 65 meter, which is about the size of soccer court, very huge. With this HIMAC, carbon ions are accelerated up to 70% uh, of the light speed and applied to the tumor in patients. The size of the extracted beam from the synchrotron is about one centimeter, which is very sharp. Therefore, for the treatment, we have to broaden this beam three-dimensionally to cover the whole tumor body. For this broadening technique, there are two irradiation methods. One is passive irradiation method, and another one is the scanning irradiation method. In our institute, so QST, passive irradiation method had been used since 1994 to 2011. And after that, since 2011, we have used scanning irradiation method in cancer treatment. Okay, in the passive irradiation method, the narrow beam extracted from the synchrotron is broadened three-dimensionally by using the wobbler magnets, scatter, and leach filter. And such three-dimensionally broadened beam is customized with the patient-specific devices such as lens compensator and collimator to fit the treat, uh, tumor body. On the other hand, 
in the scanning irradiation method, the narrow beam extracted from the synchrotron is scanned three-dimensionally across the target volume by using the scanning magnets and by changing the extraction energy of the synchrotron. So scanning method has a lot of advantages over the passive irradiation method. For instance, the scanning method can deliver the homogeneous and uh, uh, very conformal dose distribution to the tumor. In addition, the scanning method enables intensity modulated particle therapy, IMPT. The scanning method does not need the patient-specific devices such as lens compensator and collimator. This is very cost-effective, and this can reduce or shorten the time duration between the treatment planning and actual treatment irradiation. In addition, scanning irradiation method enables adaptive treatment. However, when we developed the scanning irradiation method, there was a big problem to be solved. When the uh, treatment field is applied to the moving tumor, in the passive irradiation method, the dose distribution is just blood at the target edge. And in the target, very homogeneous dose can be delivered. On the other hand, in the scanning irradiation method, the dose distribution will be strongly distorted, as shown in the figure, due to the interplay effect between the tumor motion and beam scanning. So, at least 12 years ago, when we developed the scanning method, to overcome this interplay effect, was essential for the scanning method. So this slide shows our strategy to uh, overcome the interplay effect. One method is the gating to fix the target. By using online monitoring systems, the target motion during the beam, um, beam irradiation can be suppressed within three millimeter. The second method is the fast descanning. Repeat the scan many times very fast to suppress the hot and cold spot in those distribution. Okay, this movie shows the moving target irradiation. Left figure shows the no gating and no descanning case, and right figure shows the gating with fast descanning case. As shown in the movie, with no gating, no descanning case, we observed very significant sub severe uh, interplay effect, but with gating and with fast descanning, we can suppress the interplay effect almost perfectly. Okay, this is one um, clinical application of the fast descanning and gating irradiation method to the liver tumor case. When the tumor, tumor moves into the predetermined area, beam is switched on and Fast descanning is started. Okay, with the gating and fast descanning method, we overcome we overcome the interplay effect. And following this success, all follow-up facilities employed 3D scanning method rather than the passive irradiation method. Okay, low testing gantry. 
In the X-ray radiation therapy, it is very common that beam can be delivered at 360 degrees around the patient. But in carbon ion radiation therapy, the beam could be delivered at fixed directions. For instance, in this photo case, the beam can be delivered at zero or 90 degree. If you want to deliver the beam at different directions, patient must be rolled as shown in the picture. Of course, this is not comfortable for the patient. And in some case, it induces severe uh, treatment uncertainties. So also in carbon ion radiation therapy, the development of the rotating gantry was strongly desired. This is a photo of the uh, rotating gantry for heavy ion therapy developed at the High Level Ion Therapy Center. This is the world's first rotating gantry for heavy ion therapy. As shown in the photo, that uh, the size of the rotating gantry is very huge. The length of the gantry is 25 meter and the weight is more than 600 tons. So to reduce the gantry size, we have uh, integrated the uh, um, superconducting magnet technologies and downsizing of the gantry has been investigated. And now Toshiba, uh, Toshiba uh, have realized the very compact rotating gantry with the length less than 10 meter. And this compact gantry has been installed in Yamagata University and Yonsei University in Korea. And in Yamagata University, the treatment with rotating gantry has been already started. Okay, let's move to the final topic, the future perspective of charged particle therapy. As I introduced in heavy ion therapy field, many technology developments has been achieved, have been achieved, and more than 40,000 patients have been treated with carbon ions successfully in the world. But there are several problems to be solved. One problem is about the limited number of treatment facilities. The main reason for this problem is the huge and expensive treatment machines for heavy ion therapy. The second problem is the, about the clinical results. For uh, very radio-resistant tumors like pancreas tumor, clinical results are insufficient, still insufficient, even the carbon ion beam. And for some tumor treatment, treatment period is still long. So to overcome these problems, we have started a new research project of a quantum scalpel. In the quantum scalpel project, there are two research topics. One is for downsizing and cost reduction of the treatment machine. And second one is to maximize the clinical effects and to minimize the treatment period. For the first topic, downsizing and cost reduction of the treatment machine, we have already developed the compact machine about one third of the original HIMAC. This type of compact machine uh, machines have been already installed in many carbon ion therapy facilities and have been used in clinical treatments. But in the quantum scalpel project, we have investigated further downsizing and Final machine size will be 10 meter by 20 meter, which is about the size of two X-ray Linux rooms, very compact. 
So for superconducting synchrotron, QST and Toshiba ESS have already developed the superconducting magnet, liquid helium free superconducting magnets with a lamp plate of greater than 0.64 tesla per sec. With this superconducting magnet, the um, synchrotron can be, uh, size of the synchrotron can be reduced to uh, seven meter in diameter, very compact. So for the second topic, to maximize the clinical effects and to minimize the treatment period, we plan to use hypofractionated multi-ion therapy, in which several ion species with different characteristics will be delivered in one treatment session. For instance, the oxygen or neon ions are mainly delivered to the radio-resistant lesions such as hypoxic lesions, and helium ions are delivered to the peripheral region of the PTB very close to the critical organ. And for the remaining lesions, carbon ions is delivered. With, that, with such uh, irradiation method, not only the dose distribution, but also the LET distribution can be optimized simultaneously. So by combining this multi-ion therapy with hypofractionation, we can maximize the clinical effects and minimize the treatment period. So by uh, realizing this quantum scalpel project, so developing the compact machine and hypofractionated multi-ion therapy, we believe that we the heavy ion therapy will be more and more common in the world. So it's time to summarize my talk. So large mass and large atomic charge of carbon ions brings in the unique physics and biological characteristics of carbon ion beams. Carbon ion a beam is very effective to radio resistant tumor, and also carbon ion is suitable for hypofractionation. So far, more than 40,000 patients have been treated with carbon ions in the world. And there are 14 operating facilities and five facilities under construction, including Mayo Clinic in the United States. As a beam delivery system, the passive irradiation method is switched to scanning irradiation method. And for moving tumor irradiation, gating and fast list scanning method has been developed and clinically used. To deliver the uh, carbon ion beam at 360 degrees, rotating gantry have been developed and gantry size have been successfully reduced. As a future perspective of charge particle therapy, I introduce our new research project of a quantum scalpel. With a quantum scalpel project, the compact machine with 10 meter by 20 meter uh, will be realized and hypofractionated multi-ion therapy has been investigated. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Inaniwa, for a fantastic presentation. And I am so excited to see these new uh, compact superconducting synchrotrons. It's like really 21st century. So uh, hopefully we can hear from you in the future when such a facility is implemented in Japan.
there are lots of questions in the questions and answers, and I'll try to cover them all. Some of them you actually covered as you were explaining your lecture along subsequent slides. A uh, few times people ask, what is the cost of establishing such a facility? Do you have any idea? Do you need like 500 US, million US dollars to establish carbon facility? Uh, sorry, it's uh, difficult to answer, but uh, um, I think uh, and no, uh, I I can't um, answer exactly, but uh, um, 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 it's difficult okay. to answer. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I I understand. It would vary. Do you know what the mean ion charge state is of the carbon ion when it's moving through the medium? Is it six plus six. three yeah, plus? Of course, six. Six plus. It's always six, six plus. plus. Yes. Yeah, from the yeah. from the ion source, uh, carbon ions is, with yeah with six four plus. plus four plus. But when it's energy, moving but through the body, can the carbon ion then attract some electrons, and will the carbon change the ion state? Uh, just ju just 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 before the stopping, mm -hmm. only just just before, before the stopping. The stop. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. Um, most in, in most uh, pathway, it's six plus. Yeah. Six plus, yeah. yeah. The uh, people were also interested. Uh, we are all always curious about the differences in the German model LEM and Japanese model A MKM. Do you think that these two models can be combined? Uh, I think uh, we have to combine, but uh, actually, as I mentioned, that uh, in both, uh, uh, actually, um, in European centers, use the local effects model based German uh, German model, uh, and our uh, Asia, in Asia, uh, we use the uh, MKM based uh, Japanese model. And in both uh, both uh, areas, we could successfully treat the patients. And yeah, uh, but uh, in the future, of course, uh, we have to need to unify the model. And Absolutely. yeah, yeah, it is my understanding that four gray in Germany of absorbed dose, it's not exactly the same four grays. Yeah, that, that's in, true. That's in true. Japan. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's why you, as I mentioned, that the uh, um, special care must be paid when we compare the clinical results. Yeah, that yeah. is obtained <clears throat> in one under one RB system and compared with another. Uh, uh, clinical result obtained with another RB system. So we have yes, to... Yes, absolutely. Back, yeah. When you yeah. talk about RB, the carbon mm -hmm. beam therapy has a larger tail due to nuclear reactions. You will have more neutrons, even mm -hmm. alpha particles and other ions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the RB of the tail beyond the brain yeah. peak for carbon yeah, therapy? Uh, and uh, what you... impact it has on healthy tissues? Okay, um, of course, uh, with the MKM and local effect model, both RB models can deal with the RBE of fragment tail, uh, mm -hmm. not only proton, helium, boron, and, and so on. All ion species, for all ion species, this uh, mechanistic RB model can deal with, can estimate RBE. So, and uh, so, um, but uh, as you know, that the uh, uh, lighter ions has lower RBE. That that's why the RBE for the fragment tail is not so high as mm -hmm. compared what to the What about neutrons? A neutron and yeah, neutron uh, RB of the neutron is high, but uh, uh, actually the um, an amount of the neutron is not so much. Oh especially, really? Especially yeah, uh, especially uh, uh, especially uh, you know the in the scanning radiation method. The amount of the neutron is one order lower than that in the um, um, passive radiation method. Okay. And in addition, yes, I have to I have to mention about that uh, new, about for about neutron and in proton therapy. In proton therapy, uh, more neutron is produced in the treatment. Okay. Compared to the uh, compared Carbon to the 
carbonyl therapy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about fractionation? What is the dose per fraction that you usually prescribe? I know that this might depend on the uh, disease, on the tumor site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for instance, yeah, um, for instance, uh, um, for pro prostate, um, we use uh, 4.3 gray RBE in one fraction, and uh, total in total, 12 fraction is used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for instance, and uh, for instance, for in the extreme case for non small cell lung cancer, we use 50 gray RBE in mm -hmm. one fraction and one day treatment. Oh, really? Amazing. Yeah. So you do it nearly as a stereotactic uh, radio surgery. Yeah, yeah, but yes. uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what treatment planning system do you use? Uh, actually- um, In-house developed? Yeah, in our institute, uh, we have, we use the in-house dose calculation engine, but this uh, dose calculation engine is worked on the, user interface of the Ixio. Ixio, okay, yeah. okay, amazing, uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, those calculation engine itself is uh, homemade. homemade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. nowadays, uh, you know, um, many um, um, vendors provide uh, commercialized TPS that can mm -hmm. um, calculate the RBE of carbon ions, ray station, and Monaco, Yes, and yeah, that's, yeah, correct. That's, that's is treatment planning system also. Uh, yeah, many. Is your many. dose calculation based on Monte Carlo or? No, is it a, no, yeah. analytical one, analytical one. But still, uh, Monte Carlo, uh, partially, yeah. yeah, too time consuming. But partially, yeah. for instance, uh, to estimate the radiation quality, so fragment, fragment, amount of fragment or such, or for such estimation, we used Monte Carlo to generate the beam model. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your library. Oh. Yeah, library, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of people ask about your rigged, uh, rigid, uh, rigid filter, my mistake. They were not quite clear what the rigid filter was doing. Can you explain again, please? Rigid filter? Yes. In your passive. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can name that, but, 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 but. Right here. I think here, yeah. Rich yeah. uh, filter is, uh, rich filter is here. The rich, so uh, the triangle shape. And um, as you know, the black peak is very sharp, sharp, steep. Yes. Goes. And, but, but, but because the, uh, um, and uh, a tumor is uh, has a large size in also in the beam direction. So in order to cover the tumor body in the mm -hmm. beam direction, we have to broaden the black peak. Okay. To broaden yeah. the black peak, we use this filter, mm -hmm. that, that shape. If the mm -hmm. beam pass through the, this the, uh, body area, not DG area, this body area. Uh, in this case, the energy loss of the carbon ions in the rich filter region is zero, no energy loss. In that case, carbon ions can deliver to the very deep depths, right? But if the carbon ion pass through the, this uh, rich area, in that case, energy loss of the carbon ion at this rich region is very large. In that case, the range in the patient body is um, so short. It's uh, like in the proton therapy, you have your step wheel that yeah, that's true, that's true. spread yeah. out the breakfast. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. that, 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 uh, yes, it's the same as yeah, a hui, yes. hui. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you do quality assurance and how do you do dosimetry? Oh, for a patient <laughs> or how do you know, do you calibrate again? At a certain point, uh, I, you know, how do you know that you delivered one gray of radiation dose? 
Uh, okay, um, we, uh, of course, uh, for, for um, daily QA, we measure, uh, 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 we, genera uh, we generate the SOBP, so uh, um, standard uh, field. And at the uh, middle of the SOBP, we measure the uh, dose. Um, and for patient QA, we measure the uh, dose distribution for each, each field. And in some institution, they use the Monte Carlo based QA, patient mm -hmm. QA, uh, to reduce oh, the time. So you use like a two dimensional ion chamber array or? Yeah, yeah. For the patient QA, at least in our institution, we use the two dimensional um, ion chamber. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. can you use like your standard ionization chambers to do your dosimetry? Yes. Yes, yes, that's yes, that's yeah. a PTW one, yeah. Okay. PTW one, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How long does a treatment take from patient setup ah, okay. to, to the end of the treatment? Do you plan 20 minutes per session or half an no, hour? No, um for um I I don't know I forgot the exact number, but for the patient setup. We use the automated patient uh, setup uh, system. So uh, the patient setup time is about five minutes to seven minutes. And do, for the do you do Combin CT? No, 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 Combin CT. Just, just two dimensional. Yeah, two dimensional flat panel, but using the automatic uh, patient setup um, yeah, software. And, mm -hmm. uh, and for the, uh, for, so, uh, that's, so uh, for the patient uh, setup, we take um, seven minutes or five minutes, and uh, for the beam delivery, it's of course it depends on the prescribed dose. But typical uh, treatment um, beam irradiation time is one to two minutes. So okay. to in total, uh, I think the um, ten minutes is the average uh, for one session. Yeah. Oh, that's very fast. Yeah, that's yeah. Very yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, have you tried combining carbon therapy with something like immunotherapy? And I oh, that's too clinical. Yeah, too clinical. But uh, um, uh, some um, in our institution, um, I heard that there's some um, some um, um, clinical trial mm -hmm. uh, has been started for uh, immuno and carbon ion therapy. Yeah, clinical trial. Okay. Just clin yeah. clinical yeah. trial. Yeah. Uh, have you also thought about because this is, for example, uh, sometimes considered for pancreas that the patients could be in standing position; they don't uh, always have to lie on a bed. Uh, actually, we we do not use the uh, currently we do not use the uh, applied position so sitting position mm -hmm. just uh, on the um, um uh, on the couch yeah mm -hmm. but uh, but uh, as you know that uh, the gantry system for carbon ion therapy is very huge and very expensive the size yeah. can be could be. Uh, reduced and 10 meter length, but actually the cost, we use yeah. the superconducting magnet, so cost is very huge. So, you know, um, upright position, so sitting position is very, will be very useful. Yes. Especially in carbon ion therapy mm. to reduce the, uh, to reduce the size and to, uh, and cost down for cost down. Yeah, yeah. it is yeah. very important topic for the future research. I think. Yes. Yeah. When do you see the superconducting facility, the compact system, uh, to be going clinical? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, as you as I mentioned, uh, for the rotating gantry, we have already used the superconducting mm -hmm. magnets, and yes. yeah, that's why we can reduce the size of yes. the gantry. But uh, in the quantum scalp project, we uh, will uh, develop the superconducting synchrotron. Mm -hmm. So with the superconducting synchrotron, and, uh, and we estimated that the size can be reduced to seven meter in diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very compact, yeah, yes. as compared to also yeah, comparable to proton 
Yeah. yeah, so when do you think, you know, when I see size only of the two linear accelerators, mm -hmm. that's extremely attractive. So when yeah. do you think that will become clinical? Uh, actually, Five years, uh, 20 years? Well, at, um, at least we have already uh, got the budget mm -hmm. to build the quantum scalpel building. But actually, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. So we have uh, we have just started the construction of the building, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, just the building we got yes. the budget. So <laughs> so equipment we have to get the budget. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always down yeah. to the but, budget. Yeah, but but but, but, but as as I mentioned that we have already started the construction of the quantum scalpel building. Therefore, we we will uh, we will uh, develop also develop the uh, superconducting um, synchrotron, and uh, in hopefully in six years, so three, uh, six, six, five to six years, we we, we can start the um, treatment. So yeah. multi-ion oh, treatment with, yeah, in our institution, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Because of the time, I have to stop now. <laughs> uh, Dr. Inaniwa, can I ask you to kindly stop sharing your screen? Okay, okay. Yeah. On behalf of all our participants, I would like to, to thank you very, very much for a fantastic presentation. We all learned so much. Uh, thank you for your time tonight, because I know it's late in Japan. I would like to remind our participants that they will receive a, a document about their attendance, the, uh, awarding them one continuous education points. But I would also like to ask uh, the participants to join us again in about one month time to celebrate women in medical physics on the occasion of the International Women's Days. And we will have a number of speakers set up. Uh, Virginia Tsapaki uh, from IAEA, uh, Dr. Huda Al-Naemi uh, from Qatar, and uh, uh, Dr. Juliana Dasu from Stockholm, who is also the current editor of Physica Medica. So I would like to Thank you also all the participants. We re had nearly 1,500 participants uh, during this uh, meeting uh, for their uh, logging in for a time asking the questions and hopefully everyone has learned something new. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Inaniwa. Thank you. See you all next time. <laughs>